When the grid goes down and your phone hits 3%, your charging plan is useless. You think you'll run to the store and grab a portable battery pack, but you and 12,000 other people had that same genius idea, and now the electronics aisle looks like a tornado hit it. Your generator needs gas you don't have. Your solar panels, you never bought them. And that hand crank radio gathering dust in your closet, it'll charge your phone to 2% after 30 minutes of cranking like a maniac. Here's why your backup power strategy fails. It's built on convenience, not resilience. You're stuck in a tech-dependent world with zero understanding of how to make electrons move without plugging into a wall. But electricity is just organized movement. Magnets spinning near copper wire, chemical reactions, heat turning into motion. It's physics, and you can generate usable power for six months using nothing but hardware store parts and the stubborn refusal to sit in the dark. Here's the thing nobody tells you. Your modern life runs on roughly 30 kilowatt hours per day. That's the lights, the fridge, the heat. When the grid dies, most people panic because that number feels impossibly large. But you don't actually know what matters. First, your devices die. Phone, laptop, anything rechargeable. Within 48 hours, you've lost communication and information. You're isolated. Then comes the information blackout. No news, no way to know if help is coming. People make catastrophic decisions based on zero information because they can't even power a radio. This leads to false scarcity panic. You think you need 30 kilowatt hours, so you give up. You ration your last phone charge for an emergency that never comes because you're paralyzed. But here's the truth. You don't need 30 kilowatt hours. You need maybe half a kilowatt hour, 500 watt hours to cover critical needs. Communication, light, information. That's survival power. Your job isn't to replace the grid. It's to generate enough electrons to keep your brain connected to reality. Let's start with the engine you already own, your bike. That old bicycle in your garage is a power plant. First, get a basic bike repair stand and a 12-volt DC motor, the kind from a hobby store or even a car alternator. Mount the motor so its shaft presses against your bike's rear wheel. A friction drive. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to spin. Wire that motor to a simple charge controller to prevent overcharging and connect that to a 12-volt deep cycle battery, the kind used for RVs. That battery is your power bank. Then you pedal. One hour of moderate pedaling generates 50 to 75 watt hours. That's enough to fully charge two smartphones or run LED lights for hours. Your legs are now your power utility. Yeah, you'll look like you're training for the Tour de France in your garage while the world burns, but your phone will work and theirs won't. Next, let's use a force that never runs out. Gravity. You can store energy like a medieval clock. You'll build a weight drop system. Take a heavy weight, a bucket filled with 100 pounds of rocks or sand, and attach it to a rope running over a pulley anchored high up in a tree or an attic beam. As the weight drops, it spins the pulley. You connect that pulley via a belt or some salvage gears to a small DC motor acting as a generator. The trick is to regulate the drop speed with a friction brake. You don't want it to free fall. A slow, controlled 30-minute drop can generate 10 to 15 watt-hours. When it hits the bottom, you haul it back up, storing potential energy all over again. You just built a Renaissance-era power grid in your backyard. Now for wasted energy. Every fire you make for heat, your wood stove, your campfire, is dumping thermal energy into the air. You can turn that heat into electrons with a thermoelectric generator, or TEG. These are little plates you can buy online. You clamp the hot side to your stovepipe and attach a heat sink to the cold side. The temperature difference creates voltage. One TEG isn't much, but wire four of them in series and you've got 12 volts flowing into your charge controller and battery. As long as you have a fire for warmth, you have power. A good setup can generate 20 to 30 watts continuously. You're turning waste heat into work. It's thermodynamics judo. Let's look outside. Wind is free kinetic energy. You can build a small turbine. The blades can be carved from PVC pipe. Mount them on another 12-volt DC motor and put the whole thing on a tall mast. The higher of the better. A simple tail vane keeps it pointed into the wind. 
In a decent breeze, a DIY turbine can generate 5 to 20 watts 24-7. It's passive income for your battery bank. The wind is doing the work for you. And what about the sun? Forget expensive rooftop arrays. You can build a solar trash panel. Buy damaged or B-grade solar cells online for cheap, or salvage them from broken garden lights. Each cell produces about half a volt. Solder 24 of them in series to get 12 volts. Lay them out on a piece of plywood, encase them in clear plexiglass, and seal the edges with silicone. It doesn't need to be factory sealed, it just needs to not short out in the rain. A crappy one square meter panel you built yourself can generate 50 watts in full sun. That's hundreds of watt hours a day. Don't laugh at the garbage panel zip tied to your fence. It's charging your radio while everyone else is in the dark. And you can go smaller. Every time you walk, open a door, or even sit in a rocking chair, you're expending kinetic energy. You can capture it. Piezoelectric discs under a floor tile, a tiny generator on a door hinge, a flywheel under a rocking chair. Each action generates a tiny charge. It's micro-generation. But here's the real secret. You don't pick one of these methods. You combine them. You build a hybrid microgrid. The bike, the wind, the solar, the heat, the gravity, it all flows into the same battery bank. Some days the wind is dead, but the sun is strong. Some nights you're pedaling indoors while the TEGs on your stove are humming along. You're not relying on a single source. You're diversifying. You might ask why this DIY chaos is better than just buying a $2,000 solar generator. Because that store-bought system is a single point of failure. When its inverter fries or its battery dies, you can't fix it. It's a sealed plastic box. Your system, on the other hand, runs on hardware store parts and your own labor. If something breaks, you rebuild it. You are not dependent on supply chains. You are in control. So the grid dies. Weeks turn into months. Darkness presses in, but you're not sitting there watching your last device blink off. You are pedaling, you are harvesting, you are generating. Your battery bank stays charged, your devices stay on, your brain stays connected because you have light and information while everyone else is living in the Stone Age. No grid? No problem. You're running on bike watts, gravity drops, fire heat, and the stubborn refusal to sit in the dark. If you've got power in six months while your neighbors are praying for the utility company, you didn't get lucky, you won.